Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the Time Machine service that's built into OS X Server. Now, Time Machine is Apple's incremental backup system that backs up all of your files and information and does so on an incremental basis. In other words, uh, it keeps track of things that you change, things that you delete, and allows you to go back in time and find files that maybe you've deleted by accident or you want to restore. And so it's a great system that's built into all of your uh, Macintosh computers. Now, the difference is, is uh, there are times when you may want to back up wirelessly. Let's say you have a laptop or you've got other Macs on your system and you want to be able to back up to a centralized location. Well, you were able to do that if you bought a time capsule. Uh, which is uh, Apple's router with a hard drive built into it. Uh, but here, OS X Server adds this functionality so that you can manage all of these backups and have them back up to the server itself. Now, a couple of things as we get started. Uh, the first thing is, is that this Time Machine service does not back up the server itself. So you'll need to do something different in terms of backing up the server. Uh, whether that's using an application like SuperDuper to do a clone uh, of your server hard drive, which I recommend, uh, or another Time Machine backup uh, for your server, which you would attach a hard drive directly to your server and then do the Time Machine backup from there. So it's up to you on how you want to do that, but this particular service inside of server does not back up the server itself. Now, the other thing uh, to keep in mind is that ti this Time Machine service works with drives that are physically attached to the server. It won't work with NAS drives, okay? Network attached storage drives will not work. So if you've got a Synology or something like that, uh, they have their own uh, server software built into them that uh, by themselves they won't work with this setup where server manages it for, uh, with the NAS. And so I've had a lot of people who have tried to do that and have been uh, frustrated in trying to make it work. Uh, it doesn't work that way because your NAS is attached directly to your router. Uh, usually through the uh, Ethernet cable there, and so uh, server doesn't manage those types of drives. Okay, so with all of that in mind, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the Time Machine service here. And so as you can see in front of us, this is what the uh, service looks like. Uh, we've got our typical uh, status, uh, whether it's online or not. We've got our permissions uh, area here. Again, we can edit the permissions to allow connections for all users or only some users. Uh, again, depending on how you want to do this with Time Machine, you may only want some users to have the backup. Let's go ahead and cancel that. Uh, and then here it shows your backup destinations. And so let's go ahead and add a backup destination to get us started with Time Machine. So let's go ahead and just click the plus button here. And what it will do is it will ask us to choose a new destination. Now, one of the nice things about the service is you can choose multiple backup destinations if you wanted to. So if you had a number of different drives uh, that you wanted to back up to, or maybe you even wanted you know, one drive per machine you've got on your network, you can do that and just set up uh, multiple uh, destinations for it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let's just choose a destination. And what we're going to do is we are going to choose my Drobo here. And you can see I've got um, a shared items folder. This is what server will normally set up when you do your backup. It'll create a shared items folder and then a backups folder where it will put your time machine backups in there. And you can see I've got a couple in there uh, from previously. Um, so you can do it that way. Or if you just select your main uh, machine itself, like the Drobo, uh, that's all you would need to do and it will set that up for you. So I'm just going to choose the Drobo there as my backup destination. Now another thing I can do is I can limit uh, each backup to a certain size. And so if I don't want Time Machine to take over the drive that I'm backing up to, maybe I've got multiple Macs backing up to it and I just don't want it to take up all of that drive space, uh, I can set a limit on how much disk space each backup will take up. And so you can see it's only for Macs running Mavericks or newer uh, that will obey that limit. And so it's important to understand that too. If you've got older Macs, it won't, they won't obey the limit. It'll just back up. Uh, but when you're setting your uh, drive space, usually it's good to set, uh, you know, maybe two times the size of your drive or two and a half times the size of your drive. That'll give you um, a lot of backup room. In other words, it'll allow you to go further back in time. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to leave it alone because I'm not, uh, not too worried about that with my drill ball. I'll just add space. So I'm just going to say create. And so you can see right away it's uh, created the, the stored backups. And you can see here's my backups folder right here. You can see it tells me how much space I've got available uh, there. And I can go in and edit this anytime just by clicking the pencil. I can come in here and edit. And you can see it does create this volumes, drobo, shared items, and then backups folder. 
I'll just say okay and leave that alone. I can delete a backup anytime just by highlighting it and clicking the minus or like I said I could add another backup folder just by clicking the plus. So that's all there is to setting this up. Now that we've got it set, let's go ahead and throw the switch so that the service uh, is started. And you can see now it's all started. It says Max on your local network can be backed up to server. And so the service is up and running. We've got the green light and we're all set. So now let's go ahead and go to a client machine and see what it looks like to set it up on that side. Okay, here we are over on a screen share on a client machine. And to set up Time Machine, you go into System Preferences. You go into Time Machine here, and then you just want to select your backup. And so you'll see there's my backup on server showing up right there. Uh, I would just say use disk. Now if I wanted to, I could encrypt uh, the backups as well. Uh, if you're using File Vault 2 or anything like that and you want your backups encrypted, uh, you can select that. It will slow down the process a bit though. So if you're a home user, probably not something you're worried about unless you've got a lot of sensitive data on there. So we're just going to say use disk in this case. And so it's going to connect to the server and it's going to ask me to authenticate. Okay, once we put that in, you say connect. And now it connects to the server and you can see it's got the backup right here. And it says the next backup is in 14 seconds. Uh, if you want to, you can just click this box to show Time Machine up here in the toolbar. And so that way you can kind of see the backup right here. It's waiting to complete the first backup and get started. And it's just going to let that run. Okay, one more thing I wanted to show you before we go is you can monitor your backups right here inside Time Machine. If you just go to backups right here, you can see uh, the backups that you've got. You can see there's one there. You can see how long ago it was and the total size of those backups and then just kind of get a running list of all your backups from here. Uh, from here, you can go in and hit the uh, edit arrow and it will show you uh, the latest backup. Uh, the earliest backup you've got, which is also nice, so it shows how far back in time it goes, whether it's encrypted or not, and what the history is and, and uh, where it's stored. And you can also view the SharePoint right here, which will take you into file sharing to show you where it's at. Uh, let me just say OK. I can also get rid of a backup from here as well just by clicking the uh, minus sign here and it will actually delete the backup and it will be gone. So again, it gives you some nice management options to help you kind of manage your backups in this way. Let's just go back here. Uh, so that's all I have for uh, the Time Machine service. As you can see, it works really nicely. It's just a great way to centralize your backups into one place on your server. And just make sure that uh, those uh, uh, team workers or, uh, or family members make sure they have a backup because this will happen wirelessly over your network without them even thinking about it and without you having to worry about whether or not a drive is plugged in or not uh, on your laptop. As soon as they come in the network, it starts that backup. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.